everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Rhonda and I'm also known as Sparkly One. Today I'm going to show you how to make this adorable hook holder for your crochet hooks. You can also make it for knitting needles and you just have to make it a little bit bigger, but it's totally customizable. You can make it as, as big or as small as you want. And then inside, look at this. This is really fun. So it, this is a little tie that I made that goes right around to hold it together. And then you open it up and then here you go. So all of your hooks are nicely organized in this really sweet case. So I made it with a half double crochet on the inside and on the outside I made this basket weave stitch. So I have a little tie that holds scissors right here and then on the inside as you can see there this I'm using this as a stitch marker and then there's the yarn needles on the inside and then my crochet hooks. It keeps everything nice and compact and just all in one place. So whether you're traveling or you're just sitting on the couch, you can just put it into your bag or lay it on the couch and you have everything with you. And the needles aren't all noisy in a little box or anything. So this is perfect for anyone. And if you know a crocheter and you wanna make a gift for them, wow, this would be a great gift for someone. So. Um, I just made the edge right here with a popcorn stitch and then you just close it up just like this with your little flower, the tie, and that's it. How cute is that? If you're interested in learning how to make this, grab your hooks and your yarn and let's get started. The yarn I'm going to be using for my crochet hook holder is this Red Heart Yarn, it's called With Love, and it is in the color Minty. I'm going to be using a size 9 or a size I crochet hook. To start this project, all you're going to do is make a slip knot, and then you're just going to chain the width until it measures approximately 9 inches. Then all you do is you yarn over and you insert your hook into the third chain from the hook. You can go in this way if you'd like, or I like to go in the back bumps. So I'm gonna to skip to the third back bump with a half double crochet. And then you're just gonna do a half double crochet in each of those back bumps or in each stitch, whichever way you choose to do it. And you're going to just continue throughout the pattern and you're going to crochet until you reach 10 inches tall. Okay, so just to let you know, I have 28 stitches across and I have 21 rows, okay? So if you count each row all the way up, I have 21 rows. So you can make it as wide as you want. Um, this one is about 10 inches tall by nine inches wide. So again, you can adjust that no matter um, what, what size you want. You can always just, you know, subtract a few rows or whatever. So in this case, I'm turning it to where it's vertical, okay? Because that's how I'm gonna be putting my needles in there. This is the inside of my case. So after you've made your inside panel, then you're going to go around the outside with a single crochet. So you're just going to chain one at the corner and you're going to go all the way around. Let me show you. So I don't want you to have too many on the side. So what I'm doing on this side is I'm going into the space where the double, cro I mean the chain two spaces. So you're just going to go in there and then you can go into this space right here. And then here's another chain two. So you're gonna go in there. But you get to this point of where it looks kind of odd. Do not go into that space right here. Just go into your half double crochet at the end of that row. And then you can go into this space. And then here is your chain two. You're gonna go into that space. But then again, you're gonna come across this weird space right there and don't go in there because you're gonna to add too many stitches and it's gonna be um, stretched out looking. So let me just show you that. Can you see that? So that looks perfectly fine. So just make sure that you don't add um, an extra stitch when you get to that weird kind of a row. 
So just continue down the side to the corner and then check your work and make sure it's not too stretched out. And then we can continue to the corner. So you're gonna skip this stitch, you're gonna go into this last end of the half double crochet. And then here's your tail. So that's telling you that's your corner. Here's your first stitch. So you're just going to single crochet into that one. And then you're going to just single crochet all the way across. And then in these stitches, you can just single just like that. And that's why I do like going into the back bumps only because it does make it a cleaner edge so that you can do this a little bit easier. So that's what your corner should look like. So they should all just be a slight, slight curve like that. So just go all the way around till you get back to this corner. I've reached the beginning where I started and then here is the little chain, um, the chain that you started with. So you're just gonna go into that first chain and do a slip stitch. And that will give you that curved look on the corner right there. Weave in your end of that last stitch and then we will move on to the cover. For the cover, I'm gonna make a basket weave stitch and then I'm going to just do a slip stitch. And now what I have to do is get it to match the width of this, the inside. So this is about nine and a half to 10 inches wide. So I'm gonna make my stitches to measure 10 inches across. And I have to do those in multiples of four. So make sure when you're doing that, that you do it in multiples of four. So if I had 28, I think I had 28 in the last one, I'm gonna make 32 stitches and I'm gonna see if that's gonna be wide enough. I've made 32 stitches and as you can see, it is perfect. So it goes from there to there. Add two extra chains and then half double crochet in the third chain from your hook. And then do that all the way across and then you'll have your half double crochet row and you should have 32 stitches. So I have 32 stitches across and it measures right along the edge right here. You just measure it and see if it fits. And if it's a little bit bigger, that's a little bit better. So, and I know you can stretch it, so that's fine. So once you've got the width that you want, you don't want it to be shorter. So you definitely don't want it to come like that on the edge. Even though you do have a single crochet that goes around, you just wanna make sure that it's the same width or just a little bit longer, maybe one stitch longer, that's fine. Let's go ahead and start on the second row. So you're going to chain two and you're gonna turn. We're gonna do a front post half double crochet. So that means that these are gonna be called posts from now on. So see that post right there? This is your chain over here. So you're just gonna avoid that, but you're gonna go from the front to the back. You're gonna yarn over and you're gonna pull through. Then you're gonna yarn over again and you're gonna go through all three of those stitches. And you're gonna do this three times. Just like that. This chain right here will not be counted as part of your basket weave. So you're gonna have increments of three, little squares of three. So let's move on. Let's go ahead and yarn over. And now this time we're gonna go through the back post. So there's the post. You're gonna, you're gonna put your needle from the back into the front, pull through, yarn over, pull through. Okay, let's do that again. So this is a back post half double crochet. So you're yarning over, you're gonna go in that stitch and then to the back, yarn over, pull it through, yarn over, pull through again. So what you're doing is you're making a little basket weave. Can you see that? So again, this one's the front one because you've done three already. So you do three in a row, yarn over, you go in from the front to the back, 
back to the front, pull up, pull through, yarn over, pick up that stitch, and pull through, yarn over, pick up that stitch, pull through. So there's your three. So you're gonna yarn over and this one's gonna be a back post. So you just push it to the back and pull through. Push it to the back, pull through. Don't forget to yarn over first. Yarn over, front to back, pull up. So as you can see, it's making this little pattern. And you just keep doing this all the way across until you have all of your stitches done. And then I'll meet you here at the end of this row. Okay, so I'm coming to the end and I just wanna show you this. So I've done three. I'm gonna do three more. Just like that. One, two, three. And then at the beginning, if you remember, I said not to count this first chain as a stitch. So at the end, it's the same thing. So we just did three back posts, and this time we're going to go into the top of that chain that's at the end right there. Whoops. Go under two of those stitches in that chain. So you're, you're gonna have two strands. Sure you are. <laughs> two strands on top of your hook yarn over with a half double crochet. So what it looks like is this. So it almost looks like you have four on this end and four on this end, but it'll turn out just fine. We're gonna use that to um, attach it to the case. So once you've gotten that done, then you're going to chain two. You're gonna turn your work. Let's go ahead and measure and see if we are at the proper size. So here is the first two rows of the front cover. Now that looks great. I like it. It measures, it's perfect because you need to um, have it just a little bit longer for the front than you do for this middle part. You're gonna alternate rows one and two and three and four. So for row three, this is where it gets a little tricky. You're going to do, a, you're gonna chain two you're gonna yarn over and you're going to do a back post now on this row. So you're gonna do two rows exactly the same again. So we're doing the opposite of the last row that we did. So before we started with the front post, now we're starting with the back post. And then we're skipping over into the front post. So this is now our front post. So just continue front post here and then back post here so you're pulling those front posts to the back and this will give us our basket weave pattern so I'm at the last stitch and this one you're just going to do it like you did all the other ones with a half double crochet in the top of that chain two let's just do one more row exactly the same so you're going to chain two turn and again you're going to go in the back post so all the back posts you do back posts, the front you do front post. So just go ahead and finish this row and then I'll see you at the next row. Make sure both of your pieces are exactly the same size. I chained one at the end of my last row and then I'm just gonna go in between these spaces right here and I'm gonna do my single crochets all the way around. So just do whatever's easy for you. Um, go around and continue till you get to the beginning and then we will go ahead and put these together and start making our border. Oh, and don't forget at each corner, you're just gonna, you're, you can put two single crochets in each corner because we don't wanna make this hole too big. So that's only why I'm doing two. Otherwise you can do three whatever you prefer. And then just go ahead and go around with your single crochet. And I'm just going in between all of the stitches. Okay. 
when you get to the corner again, all you're gonna do is do a slip stitch underneath that first stitch. Do not fasten off on the end because we do need that to connect the two panels. And this is what it looks like. What you're gonna do is you're going to lay the two pieces together. It should be perfectly fine. They match up really well. And then all we're gonna do is do a whip stitch or a single crochet all the way around. So I haven't decided what we're gonna do yet. You can position it whichever way you want. I think this will be either way. It looks exactly the same on both sides. So it doesn't really matter which way it goes. And then this is the important part. So you can run them up and down. So you can put your hooks in here and you're just gonna weave them in and out like that. So this will be the proper way to do that. You can put a little tie in here for your scissors. I think that's probably what I'll do because last time I didn't do that on my other one. So that's it. And then it's gonna fold together like that once we're all done here. And then we're gonna move on to connecting it. When you get to the end of your row, do not fasten that off. And then take your other, take your other, um, the inside panel, and I'm putting this just like this on top of it. And I'm going to attach it at the corner. And make sure that you have this running vertical. And this, you know, right where you left off. So this is working, this is working back and forth. And that's the proper way to install this and connect this. So I am just going to connect it in the top of that corner, bring it through with a slip stitch, and then just snug it down. And then I'm just gonna go through both strands and I'm gonna be doing a half, I mean, I'm gonna be doing a single crochet all the way around. So just go ahead and connect this and then we're gonna work on the border. You might have a few extra stitches. If you run into that, it's not, um, even at the bottom, you just have to pull it out and do maybe two at a time or something like that. So you could do like this, pull it through, and then again, you could pull it through another one. And that way you're kind of just filling up that space. It's not really gonna matter, it's not gonna show. I'm just gonna continue to the end. Let me show you how to get to the corner. Just like that. And it worked out pretty well. I didn't have to skip any stitches, so that's good. So here's the corner. So just go ahead and put three stitches in this corner. Just like that. And then go ahead and work across the top and all the way around and just put three in every corner. And then I'll show you how we do the border. I'm just going to cut my yarn and I'm gonna weave in my end. Now, if at this point, what you wanna do is if you want the same color border, then don't, don't cut that if you want the same color edging. But I'm gonna do a contrasting color for my edging and I'm going to make mine white. So all you're gonna do is take a needle and just weave in your ends. Don't be afraid to stretch on it a little bit and just kind of shape it up and get it to look more like a square or a rectangle or whatever size it turned out to be. And just shape it up like this. Okay, that looks good. Take another piece of yarn. I'm gonna say, you know, probably about 20 inches long and thread a needle, a yarn needle. See how long my end is? What I'm going to do is I'm gonna find the center of my rose right here. Then I'm just gonna take this yarn and in this little ditch right here, it's about the halfway point, like that. I'm just gonna go ahead and um, do a running stitch all the way across because what I'm trying to do is 
sew this together, okay? Because this won't stay together. And all you're gonna have to do is take a running stitch down the middle. You could do one up each row if you prefer, or every two rows um, to keep it flat. And that's probably preferred. So I'm gonna say do one running stitch here, one on this side and one on this side. So if you do three running stitches, it should hold it nice and flat. So let me show you how to do that. So I'm just going to go in here and you're gonna wanna kinda hide it because since this is your front side, you don't wanna see it. So you kind of have to disguise it a little bit and just don't do it haphazardly, just do it with a plan. And you can leave a long tail on this end because that you're gonna to have to um, weave this end in as well. So make sure you have a long tail. So then you're gonna go in, and these are kind of like big running stitches. And you're gonna come out the other side, so just see where you're going so you don't see it on this side. So like that, and kind of, it disappears in there. And then on this side, you're just gonna go back in like that. You won't even notice it. And then just keep it in the center row right here, in that center row. Pull it through. And then push it down again. Look at the other side again. Make sure that it's in a good spot. Oops, let's see. Kind of like in there and just make sure that you let me zoom in here see how I'm going in between the stitches so you can't see it because I don't want it to be obvious from whoops sorry about that I don't want it to be obvious from this side so I'm kind of hiding it and you go back in between the stitches and you will see it a little tiny bit. Can you see right there, like where I did it? You'll never even notice it from the other side. And then just go in between and look over here. And go up through there and down through this one. So just do that for three rows. So you're gonna do the middle and then two on the side. And then when you're finished with that, just weave in both ends of your yarn so you'll have six tails to weave in. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use leftover bits of yarn. So I love this sparkle yarn, it's so pretty. I don't know what it's called. It's just scraps that I have. So I can't really like, you know, I can't tell you what it is because I don't remember. And anyway, I have three balls of it and I'm going to use it for my my border. I had you do three stitches in each corner. So you're just gonna go into that middle stitch and you're gonna attach your yarn. And then I like to attach it with the short end like that and secure it and then switch over back to the longer yarn because it gives it a little bit more stability. I'm going to chain two. You're going to half double crochet in the same stitch and then do another one in the same stitch. So you basically have three half double crochets. So this is your chain two and then that counts as your half double crochet. And then you're just gonna half double crochet in every stitch around. And then when you get back to this corner, then you're gonna do your slip stitch and then you're gonna join. So just go all the way around with a half double crochet and then I'll see you back at the beginning. So this is the beginning and you're just gonna do a slip stitch to the top of that first chain right there. To start your popcorn stitch, you're going to chain three, you're going to yarn over, and you're going to go into the same space. So you chain three and you're going to have four double crochets in this space. And then you take out your hook, 
and you're gonna go into the top of this fourth one. So don't count your chain three. So you're gonna go in to the top of that first double crochet. You're gonna pull with a slip stitch and you're gonna make your little puffed um, edge right here. And then you yarn over, you're gonna go into the same space because this is a corner. So you want two in the corner. And then you're going to do a double crochet. And you're gonna do that three more times. One, two, three. You, you have four double crochets here. I'm going to go into the top of the first one. Put your strand right there and pull through. So now you made a little puffed, almost looks like a little heart in the corner. And then you're gonna yarn over and you're gonna go into your next stitch. So it's right here with a double crochet. So in between every double crochet on the straight edges, let me show you this on the straight edges, you're gonna have a double crochet in between. But in the corner, you're just gonna have two puffed heart, or two puffs without that space in the middle. So I apologize to keep calling it a puff stitch, but it's actually a popcorn stitch. And then the next space, because you have a double crochet in between each puff, you go into the next space with four, four double crochets, Take out your hook and then don't go into this double crochet. Go into the one that you have the four of them together. Go under both strands, put in your yarn and pull through. So just repeat that with your double crochet in between each puff and then four in the next. I think that's adorable. And this is what the corner looks like. I'm just gonna put a little tie right here so that I can tie my scissors on there when I don't need them, when I'm not using them. And then I can close it up and then they're tucked away in there and they don't slip out. So to do that, this is really simple. Start with a slip stitch. And then you're going to chain 20. So you're gonna chain 20 and then Right about here, because that's where I'm gonna tie them on, I'm just going underneath a row right there. And then what I'm gonna do is yarn over, I'm gonna pull through, and then I'm gonna yarn over again, and I'm just gonna pull through again. So I'm attaching it to that spot. Then I'm just gonna chain 20 again. One, two, three. You could go under a few more stitches if you'd like, but I'm just gonna leave it like that for now. Um, and then what you're going to do is you're just going to cut your yarn. Okay, so then that is for your scissors. So then all you're going to do is you could either tie on both of these. Just like that. Snug that up. And you don't want it super long because you don't want it hanging out everywhere. Obviously, you can add more chains if you'd like. And then I'm just gonna cut that right here. So I'm just cutting mine a little shorter. Just one thing I wanted to tell you, when you're doing that, just make sure that it doesn't go to the back so it doesn't show on the front side. So just keep it within this parameter. You can arrange this however you like. Uh, I don't. I didn't put them in evenly as you can see, but you just, all you do, so there's a row, and you're just gonna take your hooks. I mean, this is a very haphazard way of putting them in, but you just take your hooks and you weave them in and out of the crochet stitches. 
And this is the one, um, this is the tie for your scissors. I have all of my needles in here, my yarn needles. This is an old earring that I use for a stitch marker and it just opens up like that. Really simple and I could just pop it back in there. And just all my hooks, small to large, other than this one, it's out of place. Um, but you can just put them however you want. If you're one of those people who appreciate straight lines, then you're going to have to put those in properly. Because it doesn't matter to me. I just kind of throw them in there however I throw them in there. So I just I just took a small ball of yarn and then I, I unwound it. And then I'm just finding both ends. And this is how I'm going to do my double strand of yarn. So I'm going to put these two ends together and I'm going to leave a long tail, maybe like 10 inches or somewhere around there. Okay. So you want to make sure you have a long tail so you can weave it in. So here, what you're going to do is you're going to find that double crochet in the center of your edging. And then you're just going to um, start it with a double strand of yarn, just like this. And then you're gonna pull that down. You're gonna make a chain approximately 24 to 26 inches long. And you're gonna wanna do these a little bit snug because this is all you're gonna have for that whole entire uh, chain that wraps around the case. And you just want it a little bit more tight. So don't do it loosely, do it a little bit more snug than you normally would. I'm just gonna cut this right here. And I'm just gonna pull that tight. So I left a strand about five inches long and it's of course doubled. So when I finish my flower, I can just tie it on with, with, this, uh, with this end. Okay, so you're going to make a magic circle and you have the tail in your hand like that. You pull the strand over and you crisscross it like an X. And then you're gonna go underneath and pull the top strand like that. And then you're going to chain one. You can tighten the circle up a little bit. Then you're gonna make 10 single crochets into that circle. One, two, 10. And then just tighten it up and then go into your first single crochet into the front loop, the front loop only of your single crochet and pull it with a slip stitch. And you can tighten the middle up. Then you're gonna chain two and then you're gonna double crochet three times into that first front loop of the next stitch. So you have one, two, three. And then you're gonna slip stitch into the next front loop only. I'm gonna chain two. Then you're going to do three double crochets into the front loop only. One. Whoops. Two. Three. Slip stitch into the next single crochet front loop only. And as you can see, we're making petals. Chain two and go into the front loop only of the next space with a double crochet. Do that three times. And you're going to slip stitch into the next space, front loop only. You're just gonna go all the way around until you get to the beginning. I'm on the last petal. Okay, there you go. And you're gonna slip stitch into that, that last space. 
and then how cute is that? So I have five little petals. Now you can stop here, you can fasten it off, and then you can attach it to your um, <laughs> and to, to the tie on your hook case. Or if you wanna follow along, I'm gonna do a second layer. So you slip stitch into that last stitch right there. And then you're gonna flip this over and see where your strand is coming out. You're gonna go into that same space with a slip stitch. You're gonna go somewhere in that area, right underneath it with a slip stitch. So you're joining to the back. Then you're gonna chain three, you're gonna yarn over twice, and into this space right here in the back loop, that's the back loop of the front one, you're going to do three treble crochets. All in that same space. And then you're just going to slip stitch into that next space. And you're making this little petal behind it. Then you chain two. I mean, you chain three. Sorry about that. Chain three. Treble crochet into that next open space right there on that loop. And that's the back loop of that first original front loop. So you have three, then you're going to slip stitch into the next space. And then you're just gonna repeat that all the way around. So you're making these petals behind these petals. I'm on the last spot where there's that open loop and that's my slip stitch. And then as you can see, so here's my tail. Let me put that to the back. There is the little flower. Now you can pull this more snug if you want to close up that little hole right there and what i'm going to do is i'm probably going to glue in a little sparkly stone right there because i think it's going to be so adorable and i'm just going to join at the base right here with a slip stitch and then i'm going to pull up my yarn and look how cute this little rose is it's just a layered flower I used to make these all the time on my hats and I thought they were just so cute. Um, I'll show you how to attach it to the hook case. So I just cut my ends and then I'm just gonna tie this together right here at the side, just with a little knot. There we go. So now I have those two strands. So here's my hook case without my scissors. I took those out. I'm gonna close this up. I'm gonna weave in all of these ends and then I'm gonna be attaching my flower. I have all these strands. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these and I'm gonna tie it in a little knot right here where they join. Like that. Whoops, not as easy as it looks. <laughs> okay, let's see. I'm sure you could figure this out. And then I'm gonna tie it just like that so it's on the end. And I'm just gonna tie it again just to make sure it's nice, nice and secure. There we go. And then I'm going to weave in these ends on here and I'll weave the other ends up here into this area. making this case for your crochet hooks or your knitting needles and if you make this please send me an email 
at sparkling160 at gmail.com with a photo of what you made. I'd love to see what everyone's is looking like because they're all going to be a little bit different depending on the size you want. Don't forget to leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you guys and let me know what you want to see next because I do have a few crochet projects in the works, but I would like to know exactly what you guys want. That would be great. Don't forget to subscribe and like and share my video. And I'll see you next time. Take care. God bless. Don't forget to leave me a comment. Bye.